the toughest section of the draw. You potentially got Davidenko maybe versus a, uh, Verdasco right. in, in one quarter there. And you to do different things off, off, off different balls. So we look at this inside the point. And Federer here playing some defense. And Estu comes in, you freeze it there. So now you're thinking, okay, he's got some room down the line. And he go cross court. He's setting himself up. And Estu sneaks in. He goes with the top spin lob. And here Federer with the forehand. You freeze it here. You pretty much... He could go either way. Hanescu doesn't move that great, so Federer just says, yeah, all right, I'll just go into the open court. A lot of different options. His ability to set himself up to be in position early allows him to just sort of wait, kind of feel where his opponent's going, and then that was his 27 forehand winner that we showed you. And she got some help, Mary. But Clay Manova's been very stubborn today and been dictating play as we look inside the point. Watch how Clay Manova keeps Justine Anna pinned over on the ad side of the court. Justine's just a couple of steps over towards the center. I'll tell you, this was some amazing pressure tennis from Isner. This is a big point, Brad, in the third set tie break. And this is what you're talking about, the big forehand, but also some patience as well. You know, very accurate from the big man besides the power. And he's being steady here. This is one of first points where I saw him take a little something off and then he loads up. And Patrick, the biggest improvement in John Isner's game. A year ago, he was barely coming to the net. He was not a good volley. He is starting to venture forward a lot more and he's volleying well. Come on, Brad, give me that stat. Since Indianapolis last year in tiebreakers, what is John Isner? He's won 29 and lost six since Indianapolis. And that coincides with his ranking being 96 seven months ago, now 28 on his way to the top 20 after this event. Del Potro struggled again. Here taking on Florian Meyer, the veteran from Germany, and Del Potro had to fight pretty hard to win this. But Petrova is taking advantage of things, and she can really crush the ball off both sides. Now, that was a, a great point. A lot of the times, the reason Petrova's winning points are because of the unforced errors tumbling off the rack. Yeah. Of Kim Kleisters. We saw how she's been focusing on the backhand side of Kleisters. That one actually went straight down the line, one of the few. That's why it caught Kleisters. Kleister, this is a head to head 4 0. You never get in a rhythm, but he seemed to find one. You know what? Karlovich got off to a you know, good start, serving well, but Nadal just found his rhythm when he needed to. And look at the movement and the hands. He converted his third break point, breaks the lead 5 4, served out the first set 6 4. He's serving here 4 5. And a little couple of let courts were good for the big man. He takes advantage of another let court. And a nice stick save volley. I always love that. You raise your hand. Thank you very much. But I'll take that second set anyway. 6-4. Karlovich serving one all. Great point, though, Nadal. Look at that. Early in the third set, Nadal found his return game, and he started to make a lot more returns. And that was the difference, getting it down low. And this was the huge passing shot off of a good low return. He's got his man pinned. He could have gone either way. He picks it down the line and just takes care of business. And then Nadal serving 5-4. The last game in this match, one of his best, I, I tell think, you what, I've seen. He closed it out like Manny Rivera closes you out of the Yankees. Enter the Sandman. David Denko footwork here. You see split step there. Split. Movement. Split. Movement. Split. Movement. Split. You see how he's constantly splitting his steps there. That grounds him. Split again. Split again. And then move to, to his left. Split again. To his right. It's a it very... I mean, terrific pictures there, guys. Well done on this. You know, Cliff, he's extremely Davidenko, economical with his movement. He takes those short steps, and the thing is, his balance is so good. He's not falling all over the place. See all those split steps? That's something that your average viewer at home should really take note of, because that's the way that you change direction and get ready for the next shot. 15 left. So let's just show you something here with uh, Verdasco as at in this point anyway how he opens up the court how uh, he's the one that basically stays in the middle of the court and starts to open it up starts to move Davideko around this run into the forehand side now into the backhand side now he's in the middle look at him and the forehand 
forehand side this time. Now he goes wider to the forehand side and then into the backhand side. He still positioned himself in the middle. You know squash? Well, this is a little bit like that. Again, controlling the point all the way. Finally down the line and Verdasco wins the point. That was the